Product managers are in a constantly shifting flow of generating ideas, detailing them, researching the effectiveness of those ideas, aligning those ideas with their goals, and communicating with their team. Keeping track of everything is a really massive undertaking, and that requires a really solid system. Walling is all about simple yet effective flexibility, organization, and comprehensive collaboration. Today we're going to go over how to use various features within Walling to stay on top of your product management. So first of all, let's start a blank wall. Now this wall is going to be dedicated to a new feature that we are developing for our product. We're adding a mentioning capability for chats and comments. So this wall will be where we note all of our ideas, our tasks, and our references. Firstly, I'm going to title the wall. I'm going to give it an icon and give it a cover photo. So let's call it the mentions feature. I'm going to give it some kind of chat icon. And we can turn on the cover photo by customizing the wall and showing the cover image. So we can browse Unsplash here for a good cover photo. I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to reposition it to focus on the at symbol, which is kind of, you know, fundamental to the feature. <laughs> Now is also a good time to invite your team members to your wall. So I'm going to do that real quick just by hitting the plus symbol next to my headshot. This way they can watch as we develop the wall and also join in too. So let's start the first section. I'm going to go with the most relevant and that being the brief for the feature. I'm going to add a new brick and dedicate this to what the feature will do. And you aren't limited to just words with walling. You can add resources, you can add links, you can add uh, photos, uh, files. So I'm going to actually add an example photo to this brick. And then a little bit more text too. The next brick is going to be my objectives. I think a bulleted list would be good for this. And lastly, I'm going to note some limitations for the feature. All right, now that we've got some details on our feature, I'm actually going to color code this one just to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm not a new section. This one's going to be dedicated to my visual references for how the feature will look. In this instance, I'm actually going to drag and drop multiple files at once uh, onto the wall. And as you can see, Walling will create this layout for me. All right, let's create another section for our user interviews. I think in this instance, the best section view for this would be the table view, just because each of our interviewees have um, multiple variables that go along with them. And with the table view, you can really easily accomplish that. So if you go into the options for one column, you can actually change the type. And there are quite a few different types that you can pick from. So in this case, I'm going to want two strings, one date, and one number. And I can just go ahead and remove this column. I'm going to retitle these columns name, session type, the date they were conducted upon, and the feedback out of five. And this one, since it's a little bit longer, I can actually expand this one a little bit so that the full title shows. Firstly is Kyla Rivers. Hers was a follow-up session which was conducted on the 27th. And she gave us a four and a half. Now I'm just gonna add the rest of them real quick. Now an important thing to note here is that each of these uh, rows are expandable. So once you open this up, you can add as much additional details as you'd like for each person, uh, which becomes super useful for something like user interviews, because while there's a lot that can go into them, all of the excess details can be put into a place that's just a click away, but not sort of clogging the entire view. Additionally, given that it's a table, you can actually do some calculations. Uh, so we can calculate how many um, interviews we've done, and we can also calculate an average score that we've received across the interviews. Next is the drop down behavior. And this mechanism is a large portion of the feature, so I want to make sure it gets its own section to detail the nitty gritty of it. Here I'm going to make 
a separate brick for each of the platforms that this feature will be on to know the differences between user experiences on each platform. I'm also going to add a photo and then a little bit more text. Then I'm going to create a separate brick for mobile experience. I'm also going to add a um, haptic feedback note. I'm also going to add a research resource, which you can do by just copy and pasting the URL directly onto the wall, and it will make a brick for you. Lastly, I think I'm going to add a comment to this one to mention to Arthur that if no results, we need to display a message saying no results. And with that comment, Arthur will receive a notification telling him that he was mentioned in a comment and where it was. This makes it super easy to communicate with your team while also making sure that everyone knows exactly what everyone's talking about, you know. I'm also going to color code this section to green because that's the color that the development team knows is in regards to them. Um, you can also add a description to a section. So I'm just going to briefly add. Let's make another section for our tasks. Now for this section, I'm thinking a Kanban view is best because that way we can sort of visually plot out our progress on our tasks and be able to see where we're at with everything. So let's do planned, in progress, and done. I color code these real quick. I'm gonna add a brick about creating the drop-down menu. And for this, I'm gonna add a link to the Figma design that contains our layout for the drop-down menu. So Walling makes it super easy to add uh, resources directly to your ideas um, while visually grouping them together. I'm just gonna add the rest of my stuff here. All right, now that we've got everything, I can kind of see that these um, in-progress ones have a little bit more details that I want, just a bit more spread out so we can manually adjust the width of each column individually. I'm going to go ahead and assign this one to Eric and Arthur and also give it a due date of the 8th. All right, last section is going to be dedicated to bugs and I'm going to use the same method of thinking about this one and use a Kanban view as well. Add three columns. I'm going to do backlog in progress and fixed. With the bug Kanban view, um, your team can add to the backlog as you come across them. And then you can assign them to people and have them tackled as you go along. All right, now we've got all our bugs listed. Now that we've got all of our sections out and on the wall, uh, you can see it's gotten quite long. You know, there's a lot of scrolling going on. So um, one quick easy way to navigate is the jump to button right at the top here. Uh, you can pick one section to jump to and makes it super fast and super easy to find exactly what you're looking for. And there you have it. Just one way to use Walling uh, for product management. Walling makes it a breeze to organize everything regarding a project all in one place. This not only makes it easier for you, but your whole team by improving communication and getting work done faster. All right, that's all for me. I hope you'll give Walling a go for your next product. Have a good one.